I do feel that it is a very important piece of work to mark a very important time in Malaysia, a very significant incident where a democratically elected government was taken down by a betrayal. So I, I, I feel that um, not only do you get to own a piece of historical painting, you get to contribute to a great cause by supporting uh, a party that fights for uh, democracy, social justice and equality. Hmm. I'm actually looking at the NFT now of so a lot of uh, uh, Some of the uh how do we say it? main characters, right. <laughs> yeah, a lot of main characters. So and surprisingly, it really looks like them. I can say easily like ninety over percent. I can oh. straight away identify who is this, who is this, who is that. Really. How do you draw like so close to their res- the resemblance? Is like so close. Do you, do you look at their like let's say Najib, do you look at uh, Najib every day yes. and say, okay, this is how I yes, draw? Yes, uh, I, I do. Uh, for each of them, uh, I do have an actual picture of them in that particular mm. expression. So uh, while I can imagine the pose, so hand movements, the body, sh- uh, what the body is doing, I can imagine the clothes they are wearing, the facial expressions, unfortunately, is not something... The, the details is not something you can imagine from scratch. Perhaps you can draw a caricature of the person through imagination, but you will never get capture the details. You no, know? is that guy single eyelid or double eyelid? No, is um mm. is, is there a mole somewhere around different parts of it? Where are his wrinkles? You can never imagine that. Uh, you want something real? You have to see the actual picture. And yes, so for each of them, I had to research and I had to find the relevant expression that I wanted. And if there's any tweaks that I need to do to the expression, to find the expression and then paint it. Uh, and I have to look at it. Lah. So every day I look at Najib and paint Najib. That's <laughs> <laughs> it. Welcome to the iSearch Podcast. Today, we have YB Tony Pua to share with us about the Lanka Sheraton NFT project and also everything that you need to know about this historical art piece. So, welcome to the show, Tony. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me to the show. All right. So, before we talk about the Lanka Sheraton NFT, I think there's one common question people have in their minds. Like, did you really hand draw this artwork yourself? Because previously, we have not heard much about um, Tony Pua as an artist. Yeah, so do share with us. Yep, most Malaysians would not have known that I was uh, ever involved in art or has always uh, has, has ever painted anything. But uh, all my school friends, uh, secondary school and even primary school would know that uh, art is pretty much my first love and I've always been doing art or, 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 or as specialized in art as anyone can be in school and I've always wanted to retire perhaps as an artist uh, but of course work and career and currently uh, Politics takes you places where you would not have time to paint. Uh, And hopefully, if I do retire someday, hopefully not too long, uh, (laughs) I will get to spend more time painting. Okay, okay. So, like, uh, is it like during the school time, they still call it, uh, they call it Panditikan Sani or what, right, at that time? Uh, Well, no, I mean, it's it's art. And then my secondary school was in Singapore, so it was art. Mm -hmm. And uh, I loved art, not only because I enjoy doing it. I started doing a lot of drawing since before school. I drew a lot of Spider-Man, Superman, Batman, uh, you name them, I've drawn them uh, in, in, in my younger days. Uh, and it, it's, it, it also uh, was an excuse for me to skip classes in school. <laughs> So when the class, the, the school has an event coming up, a Teacher's Day event. They need a backdrop for the stage. So, ah, Tony Poa, come, come, come. Uh, we need to prepare a backdrop. Can you help us design a backdrop and put up a backdrop? So I get to skip classes and go start doing uh, painting and stuff like that. Or they have an event coming up that needs a banner to say, let's support our school for, 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 for this uh, uh, competition that is up. Uh, I'll be there helping design the banner. And, and, and that's just plenty of artwork to be done outside of classes in school and because I happen to be 
sort of the one or two persons who can do this in school for that cohort that year or two. Uh, so I'm frequently called, called to do art. So I, I, I did paint a lot. I did art for O levels. I did art for A levels. Uh, so, so, so I wanted to be an architect uh, when I was a teenager. Because uh, it's somewhat related to, to drawing. But uh, for those who know, uh, when I went to A-levels, I took up the subject economics. After two weeks of lectures in economics, I sort of uh, fell in love with the subject and uh, um, 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 jilted art, I suppose, <laughs> at that stage, yeah. Mm. Okay, so did you really like hand draw all of this Lanka Sheraton NFT yourself and yes, how long did yes, it took yes. for you to draw it, it, everything? It, that, that, the drawing, I mean, obviously you sketched out the composition first. I had an mm. idea of the composition. Uh, I wanted to put all the key personalities with all their relevant expressions into that image. Uh, the inspiration really came from, believe it or not, um, the Last Supper painting, the, the very famous Last Supper painting with, with Jesus and the seven apostles yeah. or, or however many apostles, where everyone, I mean, it, it was about betrayal, it was about everyone's expression, what they were doing at the dinner table, it was about someone awaiting things will happen. I wanted to give, give that same sense where, where all the people who were plotting the event, the, 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 the people who were involved or, 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 or in the decision making, uh, who at, was at the in, in the major seats in government were were expressing themselves, their intent into the painting. So so hence the composition uh, of those fifteen uh, personalities. Uh, you sketch out the composition. You put on their faces, their shape, what positions they would be, whether they are kneeling, squatting, standing. Uh, whatever else, uh, and then you start painting this uh, oil painting. I have not touched oil painting since I was in secondary school, uh, maybe A-levels time, so oh, no, actually, 20, 30 years. O-levels time. O-levels time. The last oil painting I did before this was perhaps when I was 17, uh, so that works out to 30 over years. <laughs> Thirty years ago, <laughs> uh, so 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 it took a while because I was rusty. Uh, I knew I could do it, but it took a bit of time for me to get readjusted to the paint, the fluidity, the the the, the ease of doing um, mixing the colors, the ease mm. of putting on the colors, the brush strokes, and so. So it took a bit of time. Uh, the actual elapsed time was about ten months. Of course, I wasn't painting for ten months. In between, there was a month, for example, that I had to go Sabah for. Sabah State Elections. So the whole month was without painting. Uh, I painted a lot during the lockdown, the MCOs. MCO Last one, year, MCO lockdown. Two, and early part of MCO3. So there was MCO1, I painted a lot. Then there was a break where we could all come out again. And then I stopped painting. Mm. <laughs> and then there was MCO again, I continued painting. And then there was the last one uh, where I completed uh, the painting. So overall, elapsed time about 10 months, a bit long, uh, but I suppose due to various events that was happening, I mean, when MCO is over, I'm still an MP, I still have to do my work. Uh, so, so there was less time to paint. But at the same time, uh, I was rusty, so it definitely took a bit longer than I, even I expected. Yeah. Hmm. I would say that this is a painting that took like two years to, to really finalize and finish because I think MCO 1 was uh, March 2020 so that, that was when you have the idea and you, you start, I finished start it painting and launched it uh, it was exhibited in March 2021 oh that's physical art exhibition la. then yeah. this year only you start to launch the NFT that's right, okay. that's right. That's right. right. got it so um, what are the benefits and utilities that people get when they purchase this Lanka Sheraton NFT uh, this Lanka Sheraton NFT is perhaps uh, somewhat different from many other NFT projects where they build communities and they try to, to provide a lot of somewhat intangible forms of utility. This Lanka Sheraton NFT is, is, is instead grounded on a physical asset. I think the main difference is that you don't get just a piece of digital art this digital art in a token actually represents contractually 
a share of the painting. So if you own 88 NFTs of Lanka Sharatan, you own 1% of the painting. If you own 888, of course you own 10% of the painting. Uh, that's one. Uh, number two, obviously, the benefit of that is then um, you get two ways of potential appreciation. Number one, appreciation of the NFTs. The NFTs are also subdivided by ultra rare, rare, limited and original NFTs. Uh, they are all minted at random uh, and each of them may have their own intrinsic value that will change over time. Uh, so you, you, you may get appreciation from the NFT itself. Uh, you, may, you can also gain appreciation from the underlying asset, which is the artwork. So if the art work for example rises in value say for example something happens to me uh, then perhaps you know they always say the painting value goes up when the artist pass away uh, so if something happens to me the art value Hopefully does go not. up then of course as the owner of a fraction of the painting uh, the value of your ownership then goes up as well mm. okay so how much is like the price that people will pay on the the date of the mint Okay, so the, 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 on the date of the mint, uh, the public uh, launch per uh, NFT would be 45 Matic. So 45 Matic works out to, based on current today's prices, approximately mm. 90 US cents per Matic. So that works out to, um, if I'm not wrong, approximately 190 ringgit per mm. NFT. Okay, I think it's still considered affordable in terms of like the, the pricing yeah, for people to, to like enter. Uh, mm. I do have many friends in the uh, NFT sector who said that I should price it higher because many other NFT projects have priced them priced higher and have sold out. Uh, my intent really uh, is not to 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 squeeze as much value as I can now. Uh, there are two reasons for that. Number one, we want to leave something on the table for the buyers so that if the value does go up, then the buyer benefits. Uh, and number two, we don't want to overprice because this is the first time we're doing this thing. We don't want to overprice. And if the price were to collapse down the road, then the party, and this is a bit sensitive, the party is the issuer, uh, Democratic Action Party, because they are raising funds. The proceeds of this sale will go towards the general election fund. Uh, the, 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 the party may get blamed for mm. offering something that is overpriced. Of course, all these things are eyes wide open, buy, willing buyer, willing seller, but we know the sentiments out there is never good when you buy something and the value goes down. And of course, for me, if the value does go up, Okay, even if we don't get the full value, the value goes up for the buyer. Then the next time Tony Poa or DAP issues a new NFT, then the buyer will buy again because they know that we are not out there to, uh, to scam or to, to, to squeeze blood or to eke out as much value as possible and leaving nothing on the table for the buyers. So that's, that's very important for me. We want the... Uh, buyers out there to have a good experience and at the same time while, while being part of the good cause you mentioned something about what's the utility uh, is it's part of a good cause not only you get to own a fraction of a historical asset to me is a very important painting it sounds a bit like I'm bragging about my own painting but I do feel that it is a very important piece of work to mark a very important time in Malaysia a very significant incident where a democratically elected government was taken down by a betrayal. So I, I, I feel that um, not only do you get to own a piece of historical painting, you get to contribute to a great cause by supporting uh, a party that fights for uh, democracy, social justice and equality. Hmm. I'm actually looking at the NFT now of so a lot of... Uh... <laughs> Uh, Some of the uh, how do we say main characters right. <laughs> yeah, a lot of main characters so and surprisingly it really looks like them I can say easily like 90% I can oh. straight away identify who is this who is this who is that really. how do you draw like so close to their res the resemblance is like so close do you, do you look at their 
like let's say Najib, do you look at uh, Najib every day yes. and say, okay, this is how I yes, draw? Yes, uh, I, I do. Uh, for each of them, uh, I do have an actual picture of them in that particular mm. expression. So uh, while I can imagine the pose, so hand movements, the body, sh- uh, what the body is doing, I can imagine the clothes they are wearing, the facial expressions, unfortunately, is not something, the, the details is not something you can imagine from scratch. Perhaps you can draw a caricature of the person through imagination, but you will never get capture the details. You know? Is the guy single eyelid or double eyelid? No, is um hmm. is there a mole somewhere around different parts of it? Where are his wrinkles? You can never imagine that. <laughs> uh, you want something real, you have to see the actual picture. And yes, so for each of them, I had to research and I had to find the relevant expression that I wanted. And if there's any tweaks that I need to do to the expression, to find the expression and then paint it. Uh, and I have to look at it. Lah. So every day I look at Najib and paint Najib. That's <laughs> <laughs> it. Okay. Right. So um, do you think like this NFT fundraising from political parties would be like a trend moving on for, like, from now to the election? Uh, uh, I would think so. Uh, we are not the first to raise money via, to try and raise money via NFTs uh, for elections. Uh, I believe that there are others out there who have done it. Uh, for example, the president of Muda, uh, Said Sadiq. Uh, even Anwar Ibrahim has launched NFTs recently. Uh, I haven't seen it being very well publicized, but I, I do know. Mm, yeah, uh, didn't hear about yeah, it. Yeah, but he has. Uh, so the, the, the big difference uh, is that I believe that this is a big step forward. It's not just a digital image. It is actually an ownership of a physical uh, painting. I, I think that's that's a big difference between um, the ironically traditional NFTs, which is purely digital, versus the hybrid that we are talking about today. So NFTs in this case serve not as the intrinsic value in itself. It does have value, but serves as a use case, an actual real world application of NFT technology to enable a physical object ownership to be shared by many people. Now, without NFTs, I, I, I couldn't have done this. No, I, there's no way mm. I could have done this without the NFT technology. I cannot go to, say, for example, a fundraising dinner. Come, I have this painting. I want to sell it. Can everyone sign up and own a piece of it? Not manageable. No. <laughs> Whereas the NFT mm. technology actually allows me to do it without having to deal with all the paperwork, ownership rights, you know, how much you want to buy, what percentage you own, uh, just like a company share register. Like, I, I don't have to do any of that. You know, uh, it, it, it is a technology that enables mass ownership of a painting. I thought it's really, really novel. When I figured out the, the, the possibilities, I did a lot of research uh, to, to, to find out how it could be executed. And I'm very happy that we have launched it on 1st of August. I think what you mentioned just now is very true. It's like NFT is like like a, like you're buying shares from like a public company. Right? So instead of owning like the whole company itself, you just own like a fraction of the that's company. Right. And then if the company's stock price increased, then that's where you get like the appreciation that's value. Right. Okay. All right. So um, when is the mint date and like anything that people should expect or like take note of during the mint? So currently uh, we have uh, soft launched it on the 1st of August. By soft launch, it means uh, that number one, it is now open to private buyers. Uh, private buyers meaning the cornerstone participants, uh, those who intend to buy 300 NFTs and above. Uh, so if there's anyone out there who wants to be a private buyer and who is interested in invest uh, 300, uh, to, to, to acquire 300 NFTs, uh, feel free to write to me, tonypoayahoo.com or write to lankasheraton at dapmalaysia.org. Uh, so that's, that's one. So that's already up and running. Uh, then we are also open for registration to participate in the white list. Uh, so for for... The white list, we are collecting registration now and then it should be, the minting should be open sometime in the middle of the month. Uh, and then the public will get to mint it. Uh, and sorry, for the white list, uh, the minimum purchase will be 20 NFTs up to 100 NFTs. Uh, 
Uh, and for the public, any quantity of NFTs, uh, it will be available on Medeka Day, uh, 31st of August uh, this month. Just as a further update, the public price is 45 Matic. The white list price is about 10% less, which is 40 Matic. And the private buyer price is 35 Matic. So we have made it very transparent so no one will accuse us of giving preferential pricing uh, beyond uh, what was promised on the site. Mm. Okay, what would you say for like, you know, like um, NFTs is like, I, I would assume that mostly is uh, Gen Z and also maybe like the younger Gen Ys will buy. But what about like uh, our like my parents or people older? Like what would you say if they want to buy, but then they don't know how to like, you know, install all these uh, crypto kind of things? What, what, what would you say to them? for me personally uh, in doing this project is that we are exposing NFT to 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 people beyond the Zen, Gen Zs and Z, Gen Ys, the Gen Zs and Gen Ys. We are exposing them to Gen X and the older folks because these people are excited uh, by the fact that they get to own a fraction of the painting. NFT is just a means to an end. Whereas, of course, for the Gen Zs and Gen Ys, they are buying NFT for the sake of buying NFTs. Uh, and I'm very excited because then it, it showcases the the capabilities and the abilities of the technology beyond just a digital uh, image. And of course, in doing so, we have new challenges. A lot of these adults, uh, even the Gen Xers or people my generation, uh, we have no clue how to buy NFTs. We have never bought even cryptocurrency mm. before. Uh, how, how do we go about doing this? Uh, number one, we can try and learn, as I did over the past few months. Uh, you have to set up a MetaMask wallet. Uh, don't lose your password for your MetaMask wallet. Uh, with a wallet, you can then buy uh, from the markets uh, using your credit card or, or, or online transactions to buy the cryptocurrency, in this case, Matic. And once you have Matic in your wallet, then you can go to the website and mint, the LankaSharitan.com website and mint the NFTs. It's a bit of a tedious process. It's an excellent learning exercise. But if there are those who are too lazy to do all this or really don't want to go through the, the, the pain of setting up yourself, uh, we are happy to help. Uh, so write to me, tonypoyahoo.com or write to lankasharitan at dpmalaysia.org. We will uh, do our best to help you. So you tell us how much you want to buy. We will give it to you in ringgit currency and we will help you through the process of setting up your wallet, uh, doing the minting, uh, purchasing the currency and doing the minting and we will hand over the NFTs uh, to you in your wallet. Mm. Okay, great. I think most people will go for this option and I think the, the, date, <laughs> the date that you set is also very, very nice date. It's like the yeah, Mateka the day, the, the launch. Yeah. Okay, so to wrap up, is there anything else that you would like to share with the audience before we go? Uh, this, to me, is a, a milestone for NFTs because I, I, I believe, uh, from at least from conversations I've had to, with many people in the NFT industry, this is the first time where NFTs are used to represent a physical uh, object, whether, whether it's an art or anything else, uh, for ownership by the public. Uh, and and if it works, then of course there can be more such use cases for NFTs, and NFTs will then grow in popularity. In our case, we hope for people to support because we are the first to do this, uh, and there's always extra value in doing something first. Uh, we want to be the history books, so in this case, not just you will get a chance to to be owning a piece of historical artwork, uh, a very important one, uh, you will be part of the history books where you are the first to take part in an NFT venture uh, like this. And of course, along the way, also contributing to a great cause, uh, fighting for democracy uh, and uh, 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 um, social justice in Malaysia. Okay. Great. So thanks, Tony, for coming onto the show. Check out Lanka Sheraton NFT down below, and I'll see you in the Thank next you episode. So much.